Welcome back to One Fair Review, everybody. I'm your host, Grant, and today, instead of talking about a new, exciting anime, let's talk about an old anime that's One Man's Depression turned it into Japan's very own Star Wars. Now, I've made many videos on Neon Genesis Evangelion, but I've never really given my in-depth thoughts on the show for various reasons. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about Evangelion. I'm going to give my real thoughts on it, whether I like it or love it or hate it or dislike it. So let's jump right in with the story summary. In the year 2015, the world stands on the brink of destruction. Humanity's last hope lies in the hands of NEV, a special agency under the United Nations and their Evangelions, giant machines capable of defeating the angels who herald Earth's ruin. Gendo Ikari. Head of the organization seeks compatible pilots who can synchronize with the Evangelions and realize their true potential. Aiding in this defense endeavor are talented personnel such as Katsuragi Misato, head of tactical operation, and Akagi Ritsuko, chief of scientists. Chief of scientists? Chief scientists. Face to face with his father for the first time in years, 14 year old Ikari Shinji. Average life is irreversibly changed when he is whisked away into the depths of Nev and into the hourly new destiny. He must become the pilot of the Evangelion Unit 01, with the fate of mankind on his shoulders. Written by Ano Hideki, Neon Genesis Evangelion is a heroic tale of a young boy who will become a legend. But as the psychological drama unfolds, ancient secrets beneath the big picture begin to bubble up to the surface. Starring industry legends such as Ogata Megumi as Ikari Shinji, Miyamura Yuko as Soryu Asuka Langley, industry legend in Japan voice acting, voice of many of my personal favorite and legendary anime characters in general, Hayashibata Megumi as Ayanami Rei, Eva Unit 01, and even the voice of Pen Pen, Mitsushi Kotono as Katsuragi Misato, Yamaguchi Yuriko as Akagi Ritsuko, Yamadera Koichi as Kaji Yuriyoji, and lastly, Tachiki Fumiko as the all-knowing and all-according-to-plan Ikari Gendo. Now, there are so many characters in the series that naming all of them would be intense, to say the least. So, these are the select few that I chose for now to get the point across. So, as stated before, it was director Ano Hideki's depression that led to the dark themes of Neon Genesis Evangelion. Budgetary problems and parental complaints about the content led to the original ended being completely scrapped and replaced with an extremely limited animation ending, breaking from the main plot. This is why episodes 25 and 26 are really, really bad. The movie End of Evangelion was later made based in part on the original planned ending and in part of Anno's increasing frustration with the otaku fanbase. The series' mix of psychoanalysis, religious symbolism, and genre deconstruction proved extremely influential on the mature anime ever since. The Japan Media Arts Festival in 2006 ranked it as the most popular anime of all time, believe it or not, and ever since then it has proved it stand in Japan as the most sold out franchise ever. You know, it never ceases to amaze me how important this anime is, so let's just get right into it and talk about the story and characters. I'm pretty sure everybody knows what I like about the show. I like a lot of things. So I'm going to start with all the things that I like and that I think are really good before I get into all the bad stuff. First off, I love the premise. The premise of the show is what got me into it in the first place. When this was the first anime I ever watched, I wanted to watch giant monsters fighting giant robots, which isn't exactly what Evangelion is about. It's a little bit more complex than that. But hey, it was the most popular mech show. So I got into it that way through the premise. I also really like the characters and story as it progresses. The story is very unique and interesting because of the psychoanalysis, religious symbolism, and the genre deconstruction. All of that makes it a very interesting show to watch. I always really liked the world building in this show, you know, the whole story behind Tokyo 3, uh, Saleh, I also really liked Nervu. They, they were always 
just very interesting and they did a really good job i believe in the first seven episodes establishing what everything is and then they kind of forget about it for a little while and then they get back to it in the end of evangelion and kind of explain away what is going on and what everything was about what everything was planned up until that point and uh, there are a lot of bumps along the way but i i always found that story fascinating more importantly though i really liked the characters the characters in this show are all very well written and uh, all also very well acted. I really like Shinji, even though a lot of people seem to be annoyed with him, always telling him get into the freaking robot, that's a meme at this point. I get it could be a little bit annoying, but I always like it when characters just kind of aren't perfect at something or just they're not in the right mindset. It makes it more interesting and more relatable to see, you know, a young boy who really doesn't want to do this and is highly depressed, more so than seeing a guy just yell for hours upon hours of, we need to fight the big baddies, that which is something I despise more than anything. That being said, Shinji isn't my favorite character in the show. My favorite characters, I think my top three favorite characters in Evangelion would have to be Misato, mainly because Misato is really sweet. I also think she's really smart. She's very entertaining on screen. I, she's very funny, and I also like how she is very strong, and she can make the right calls every single time. Well, not every single time, but most of the time. So I really like Misato. I also really love Asuka. Asuka, for me, is the one who breathed life into the series. From episode 1 to episode 7, the show was great. But then from episode 8, when Asuka arrives, I think that's when all the charm and the likability of Evangelion really struck me. I really liked Asuka as a character, but I also just liked how she affected everyone else around her. And, it, and she really made the show a lot more entertaining. And then, of course, there's the one and only Kaji Ryoji. I really like this character mainly because he is the most relatable character in the series. He's the most down-to-earth, and he seems to be the only one who really knows what's what's going on and you know d pulling all the stuff the strings behind everybody i really liked his character i wish there was of course more of him but you know he does get a conclusion to his arc or story if you will which is something that a lot of other characters lack but i will get to that in a minute that being said i do really like all the characters in evangelion except for ritsuko i think they are all very interesting very likable and and except for gendo like, they're all very likable, and they, I really like the the dynamic they have within, you know, the show and with each other. And at times, the, the tone will always shift from it'll be very fun and uh, lighthearted to kind of dark and serious. But it always has a consistency to it, and it never feels jarring jumping from the different tones. I also, of course, really love the art style, the design of everything. Everything's great. The Evangelions are definitely my favorite giant mechs they just design wise and i really like the design of the angels that was also very awesome I like the action scenes between them even though they're not as good as everything else as the main story but it was always entertaining to see them on screen and in episode 10 where you see all three of the evangelions on screen fighting together it was a very exciting moment and i and i really like that stuff so to sum up i really do like a majority of evangelion but <sighs> It, there's a reason why I won't put this show on like my top 10 list of favorite animes of all time because there's a lot other anime that I would re put it instead because truthfully I do have a love-hate relationship with Evangelion the franchise as a whole and I do not like certain elements of the anime I don't think the anime is perfect and I don't want anybody to think that the anime is perfect when going into it it has many flaws and of course this this video is completely spoilers so uh, if you have not seen the show already, go watch it and then come back and watch it. This, and watch me complain about certain aspects I do not like in the series. For me, a big complaint I have is the lack of conclusion and lack of development with characters. For the most part, some characters have a conclusion. Shinji has a conclusion, Asuka has a conclusion, Gendo has a conclusion, Misato has a conclusion, Ritsuko, Kaji, those characters have a conclusion. But, there's a lot of characters that don't have a conclusion, and if they do, it's not satisfying. And this happens a lot. A lot, a lot. For instance, Ayanami Rei. Even though I really do like Ayanami Rei, or just Rei in general, I feel like there's just not enough of development between her. 
they develop her a little bit in the beginning, but then they kind of just forget about her for a long time and they forget to develop her or give her any sort of characteristics besides she's emotionless. Now, towards the end, she becomes more emotional and even cries at the thought of Shinji getting her and then risks her life to save Shinji, but it just kind of comes out of nowhere. And I remember the first time I watched it, I was like, wait, what? So I, I guess she really did like him? And I don't know, you never really get that feeling across, uh, which you do kind of in the manga and even the Rebuild series where she does do stuff for Shinji, but you, you don't have it here. And a lot of the likability I have for Rei honestly does come from the manga and even a little bit in the Rebuild because of the things that she doesn't do in this show, but she does in other media. I really believe they need to have her developed more they needed to have her, you know, be the one get, getting emotional uh, more often, you know, because of Shinji. We need to see her do things for Shinji, slowly kind of fall in love with him, so then we care a little bit when she gives her life for him. As it is, she just kind of does things for Shinji towards the end in not only episode, uh, you know, in, uh, shit, uh, I'm, I'm forgetting the episode, not only in episode 23, but she also does in course the end of Evangelion giving stuff up for Shinji only for Shinji and it's like but, but why though what, what was there they stopped developing her w around the time when Asuka came and I really was annoyed by that and she doesn't really get a conclusion ever I, I you just kind of assume she dies and that's kind of it and that's a majority of the cast talk about the majority of the cast uh, what about Suzuhara you know Toji he became one of the children who was chosen to pilot an Ava. Then he gets injured and is in the hospital. You see him a little bit and then never hear of him again. What the hell happened to him? Did he just die? I mean, I assume he dies because, I mean, everybody died. I mean, by the end of the series. So I'm assuming he, he's dead at one point. But what happened to him beforehand? They never f finished or gave a conclusion to that. They just kind of... He just kind of gets left behind. And don't even get me started with the rest of the characters in Tokyo 3. What happened to them? Again, I'm assuming they're all dead. But they never tell us or they never show us what happened to them. There was never a satisfying conclusion. And these were people we were with for a majority of the series. But then they're just kind of just forgotten about. Nobody really cares about them anymore. And then we focus more on... The main characters, well, not so much the main characters, you focus on, you know, Shinji, Asuka, and Misato and their kind of psychoanalysis. And that stuff's all interesting and whatever, but I also want to see what happened to the other people. Like, w what's going on? What is going around in the world around these three main characters, if you will? Like, what's going on? We never really get a clear answer, and that's something that's always annoyed me all the way up until the present day. I've rewatched this show so many times, and it still annoys me how... You don't really get that answer unless you read the manga and it goes a lot more in depth. But here's the big cheese. The manga came out after the series. So originally, they just get rid of these characters and you don't see them. I mean, none of the characters in Tokyo 3 make an appearance in End of Evangelion. Like, literally none of them. Only the main ones. And that's not inherently a bad thing, I suppose, but this is a series that did develop these characters and introduce them, we expect a conclusion, or at least I expect some sort of resolution with them that is satisfying, or at least some more development, especially with Rey. Rey needed more development for me to give a shit when she died, which I do care now, but when I first watched it, I was like, oh, that sucks. I like her as in design-wise, and I like her personality, I suppose, but other than that, I don't have much to work with with Rey. And then Toji, what happened with him? He was one of the chosen ones, I guess, and now he's not. Just little things like that, that never play a role into the rest of the series. That's something that does irritate me. But it's not just those stuff, because there's a lot of other problems with the series. Taking away episodes 25 and 26, which are a dumpster fire, <laughs> it is a mess. It is a complete mess, and for good reason, I suppose. Uh, the budget, you know, complaints, you know, and all this stuff led to a half-assed ending. But besides those last two episodes, there's also a few other episodes out there that I'm not a particular fan of. Magma Diver is one of them. It's forgettable. It's got great moments in it, but it is forgettable. And episode tw uh, 14, for instance, that's just an annoying episode. Even though it does have some interesting insight on Rey, and I do kind of like how it's played as this meeting, it's still one of those clip show episodes that always, you know, 
brings you up on speed on what just happened in the last few episodes as if I haven't already watched it. But of course, those are just minor complaints. Uh, I guess they don't really ruin a series for you, and Evangelion isn't ruined for me. Like I said, I like the show. There's a lot of things that I think is very well done. I love the premise. The story is very interesting, very well written. I, I love the, the dialogue between the characters. I like the personalities. I love the acting. The acting's superb like i don't i think all these actors have become legends at this point for a good reason they were all terrific and there's a lot of episodes that i'm very fond of that i always remember i go back to and there are some other things that people complain about but i never had a problem with like those long extended scenes of really nothing happening except for you know atmospheric noise or music you, you know those still shots of nothing I don't know, they never bothered me. I always kind of liked those scenes. They added a lot to it. And I, here's the thing, I'm an artsy filmmaker to an extent. I can appreciate that stuff. Where it goes off bo overboard is episodes 25 and 26, which are horrendous. But, you know, I never really minded those aspects of it. And, you know, like I said with Shinji, I never had a problem with him, you know, being you know, the way he is. I, it always made sense to me, and I thought it was more fascinating that it was about his depression and... It, you know, being alone and all this, you know, other deep stuff that doesn't want, he doesn't want to get into the Evangelions. I always found that interesting, and I guess some people don't. The stuff that I don't like is the lack of conclusions for certain characters, the lack of any satisfying conclusion, and the lack of development with a lot of, in a lot of areas. Those stuff will always bother me, and stuff that I can't get over whenever I watch the show. Uh, not not the not the rest of the Evangelion franchise, but the show in general. These are stuff that do annoy me. Which, speaking of which, let's get into the presentation of the show. I think Evangelion has held up pretty well. The animation is still really nice. At times, you could definitely see where the budget was not the best. You could see that they did cut corners, and yeah, that, 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 that did that did happen. Uh, of course, it is showing its age in a few areas, but for the most part, the show still looks great. I still like the style of it. I'm a fan, of course. I really like it. In terms of soundtrack, Evangelion has one of the most memorable soundtracks, in my opinion. I mean, to this day, I still remember the soundtrack, even after not watching it for many, many years. Upon rewatching it, I remembered every single track, it, even, you know, every single different Fly Me to the Moon in each ending. That was also a very exciting thing I really liked, it, you know, waiting till the end to hear a different version of Fly Me to the Moon each time. All that was very exciting. There's a lot of things to look forward to in Evangelion. There's a few episodes that are not great, but, you know, okay-ish. But then there's some great episodes that are, that are amazing. Some episodes might drag. Some episodes are perfect in its flow and its uh, pacing. It really is a mixed bag, but for the most part, the animation's always pretty solid, except when they cut corners and just use still, not still images, but stock footage. That's kind of annoying, and then of course, you know, the soundtrack is phenomenal, so I really can't fault it on the presentation. I do believe the presentation of the show is pretty damn good and holds up fairly well. The show by itself is flawed, has a lot of problems, a lot of issues, However, it makes sense to me. I like the show a lot. I see where the popularity comes from. I know why it's one of the most influential anime of all time. I think everybody who knows anime, the history of anime, knows why it's the most influential. But, of course, the show had a horrible ending, which led to the end of Evangelion, the movie that came out in 1997. And let's talk about that one right now. I think the show, Evangelion, Neon Genesis Evangelion, is good. I think it's a good show. It's got great moments, some things I love, some things I, I hate. But the end of Evangelion, I could say without, without a doubt, without hesitation, I love this movie. It is fantastic. It is phenomenal. It is one of my favorite anime films that I've ever watched. And for many, many different reasons. It gets artsy, and it, but it doesn't go too far to where it's annoying. It hits just the right level where me as a, an aspiring creator can is just very heavily influenced by it, and I really love the visual aspect of it. The animation is absolutely gorgeous. In presentation, this, the movie was solid, and has some of my favorite, you know, soundtracks, and one of the most memorable, like I said. 
And I've mentioned this before, but nothing will ever top o Asuka versus the mass production Avas. I think I didn't even need to talk about that. Everybody knows about that iconic scene of Asuka just f wailing away at all the mass production Avas. It's phenomenal, and she steals the show in the movie. And it's a very emotional moment, especially with the music present. It just feels so just beautiful to look at. And it's my favorite just mecha fight on screen that I've ever seen with its slow, how slow these skyscrapers are fighting each other and how much damage they leave on the on the floor, which was present in the anime. But just with the budget and the, that they have here, it, they just they could go all out. And it was fantastic. I really like it. In terms of story, I think this is a very strong ending. It may not be the most satisfying, but it has a solid ending. Of course, everybody knows the end of Evangelion. Everyone dies. The third impact happens. This is what it was all built up to. The human instrumentality project. This is what Gendo wanted. And it is, I mean, it was a shock when I first watched it. I mean, when I first watched this show... I, I mean, I didn't know what to expect at the end. I didn't know what the real goal was, but after seeing this, uh, this was a this was a pretty shocking ending, and I really did like it for that because it did subvert my expectations. I expected the the world to be saved, and it absolutely was not. Now there is a problem with that in some regards because, of course, the ending isn't particularly satisfying. I find it it's a satisfying conclusion to a story, but it's not the most satisfying ending that many people would want, including myself. I mean, I wanted, you know, an ending where, you know, Shinji made a difference. And in here, he doesn't. He makes a wish, I want a new world, and then he doesn't. He's just kind of on a beach where everything's destroyed with Asuka. And I assume they're the only two survivors because everyone else literally dies. So... It may not be the most satisfying. If you want a satisfying conclusion, go to the manga, which has a much more satisfying conclusion. But I do like this as a end, as a conclusion to the story. End of Evangelion, I really don't have too much more to say about it other than it is a masterpiece. The movie is pretty short, standing at 1 hour and 27 minutes. Gets straight to the point. You have the first half, which is mainly just a lot of action and what really, as an Evangelion fan, gets you pumped. You see all the characters trying to, you know, last stand in the Nerve headquarters and, like, all the big baddies are coming. And then the second half is a lot of, you know, the psychoanalysis, as everyone always expects, the artsy-fartsy stuff. And that's all very beautifully animated with great music, and it just, it's phenomenal. The movie is a wonderful ride of emotional turmoil. It it's it is quite amazing. I, I don't know. Every time I watch it, I'm excited, but also I get very emotional. It is a very well done movie, and this is really what made me love Evangelion the series. Uh, before that, I thought the show was good. I thought it was great. I knew where the inspiration for anime came from for everybody, but of course, I didn't think it was perfect. This movie, though, I do would say it is as perfect as you could have gotten at the time. I do believe there is a better way to end the series and to make the series, like, more development with characters and more conclusions, you know, just continuing certain aspects that just were forgotten along the way. But as a conclusion for the main characters in this movie, I thought it did a very, very good job. And those are really my thoughts on the Evangelion the original Evangelion series, including the show from 1995 to 1996, and then the movie, End of Evangelion, from 1997. I like it a lot. That doesn't mean that I think it's perfect. I never wanted to tell anybody or convince anybody that this show is perfect. I've always said, go into this show expecting there to be flaws, but know that it's, a, it's an interesting show to get into. Not everyone's going to love it. I know a lot of people who love it. And I know a lot of people who hate it. It really just depends. If you're not into more nihilistic, you know, stuff and depressing stuff, you're probably not going to like it. If you're okay with it, you might enjoy it. Or you might love it. Who knows? It really just depends. It's not It's not a one-way streak. Unless you're from Japan, which every Japanese friend I have and I've met always mentions that they like Neon Genesis Evangelion, which, of course, I'm not surprised. Have you, have you not seen... How much money and how much they whore the franchise out in Japan.
With that being said, would I recommend Neon Genesis Evangelion? Well, you already know that I do. I mean, it's free. It's on Netflix now. Check it out. If you don't want to watch it on Netflix and watch the original version, good luck trying to find it. It's pretty damn hard. Even me, an avid collector, I can't find it. Anyways, thank you guys for joining me for this video. Uh, let me know what you guys think of Neon Genesis Evangelion. Give me your in-depth thoughts. Do you love it, hate it, despise it, never want to watch it, don't care to watch it, not interested in it? Let me know down in the comments down below. I like to hear what you guys think. If you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, I am Grant for One Fair Review. As always, have a nice day, and I'll see you next time.